live at the NASDAQ market site in Times Square for NASDAQ Disruptors. I'm Elise Southwell. Today we're talking about artificial intelligence, specifically brains for robots. We're here with Massimiliano Versace, CEO and founder of Neurala. He's also the director of the Neuromorphics Lab at Boston University. He's talking to us about his company and how they are making software brains for robots. Welcome, Max. Thank you for being here. Thank you. Thanks for having me. What is Neurala? Neurala is an artificial intelligence company uh, that was born out of Boston University. Uh, we designed the Neurala brain. And the, the Neurala brain is an artificial intelligence brain that emulates uh, aspect of human perception and uh, uh, intelligence in software. And we use this to make machine more uh, intelligent, uh, interactive, safer to use, and in general, more uh, useful for humans. Can you talk to us about what are learning neural networks? Yes. So learning neural networks is a subset of artificial intelligence, right? And AI or artificial intelligence has been around for many, many years. Uh, neural networks is a, essentially mathematical emulation of brain function in software. So you study the brain, you study how perception, memory, language work, and you reproduce this in software. And the mathematical equation that work together and emulates this intelligence in software. So neural network is essentially the closest copy of human brain that today we have and we can use in software. So what is the difference between neural networks for, say, a supercomputer and then what you're doing? Yes, so neural networks need a lot of compute power to run. So we, at Neurala, we have designed uh, a new methodology that enables this uh, neural network to run on very, very inexpensive and cheap hardware. The same hardware that people today carry in cell phones uh, today can be used to emulate uh, human visual cortex, and which is revolutionary, because today you can put very sophisticated intelligence that uh, you need supercomputer for just a few years ago, you can put it on a device where it's needed in real time, interacting with, it, with its environment. Is this, so this SDK technology? Well, the SDK is a software development kit. Uh, the technology is called the Neurala Brain, and that's essentially the software. Why is there so, so many trends on uh, mimicking the, the human brain right now? It's actually very simple. Uh, today, uh, just looking around the Times Square or the studio, you will see thousands of devices. And a device can be as simple as a camera with a little chip installed to it. And so as these devices are proliferating, let alone drones, self-driving cars, uh, IoT devices, um, the number of people who can actually control these devices remains constant, unless we want the Earth to be populated by many, many more billions of people. So uh, it's inevitable that artificial intelligence will be needed to make this device more useful. And essentially, the future we are going to is each device will have a brain so that it wouldn't need the brain of the operator uh, to function, but it can just rely on an artificial brain. And that's what we are building. So essentially, like self-driving car can operate without a human behind the wheel. That, is this what you're saying? Exactly. So if you think self-driving cars, what the industry is trying to do is to imitate the human which essentially is to build the brain for the self-driving car. And you will see this for cars, for drones, airplanes, uh, industrial robots, companion robots, and so forth. Do you think eventually planes will fly themselves? Yes, uh, and that's essential, right? Because uh, uh, if you think of today's airplanes, they are way more complicated than uh, you know, the space shuttle of a few years ago. And they have way too many sensors and way too many controls for a human to be able to handle it. And so AI is not only uh, something that you know, maybe will come, but it's something that is inevitable to uh, sort of counterbalance the complexity of machines today. On the consumer side of things, there obviously is a trust factor. We spoke about AI you know, over NASDAQ disruptors with other organizations, of course, but there is this trust factor, right? Yes. yes. Yeah, I mean, uh, I believe that AI uh, will need to be trusted uh, with, the, with the same criteria that you trust a human, right? So how do you trust a human uh, driving a car? Right, so first of all, we should lower the bar. Right? Human is not infallible. You know, it, it has defects, and uh, you know, self-driving cars are, I think, more conservative than humans in driving. So first of all, let's lower the bar. Uh, we are not aiming for God. We are aiming for human performance. And then we should certify AI. So we should put AI to the same test that we put humans. Right? So the AI should be able to drive a, a human, take a, a driving test, uh, or essentially do the same kind of training and testing that humans go, go, go and do. And if, we, if the equation AI equal to human brain, then we should trust AI as much as we trust humans, or more. 
Very interesting. Mm -hmm. What uh, work are you doing with NASA? So with NASA, we completed the work to uh, build uh, essentially an emulation of a rat brain to power the Mars rover. And so, uh, you know, if you rely on the speed of light to communicate between Earth and Mars, it takes, you know, 20 minutes for a signal to go one way, or like the movie The Martian, you remember? The guy had to wait. So that's not really the way to talk, right, to, 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 to a machine. You need the machine to have its own brain. And what we did is we designed uh, an artificial brain for the Mars rover. It didn't go to Mars yet, but enabled the machine to uh, essentially govern itself like uh, a small rodent will do. Uh, and navigate around Mars by itself. Wow. Max, not going totally off topic, but I just want to say that you are part of fashion royalty, right? That's, uh, that, that's the rumor. Yes, uh, we have a relationship, uh, cousins, and... Uh, the Versace family. Versace fashion family, royalty. yes. So I, you know, they do modeling, and they do brain modeling, right? So it's always modeling. So Nerala was put on the, na the map because you entered the um, Incubator Accelerator, Accelerator Program uh, Boston Tech Stars. Yes. How was that experience for you? It was galvanizing, uh, in particular because my daughter was born a week before. So she came to, for three months, she came and work in the Accelerator. So it was a lot of fun. Uh, it was the moment in which we uh, took our research and uh, uh, essentially thought very hard on how to make a product out of it. And at each step of this process, you know, the, the complexity and the, the, the challenges go further and further. So it's sort of exponential. Uh, but it was, it was a turning point for us, and I would advise everybody to do it. You're the director of the Neuromorphics Lab at Boston University. What is that, and what do you do there? Well, uh, so the Neuromorphics Lab is uh, being, uh, uh, you know, sh is shrinking as, as time goes on because everybody get, gets hired uh, in Neurala, so that's uh, the transition process. And so the Neuromorphics Lab, essentially, we studied the, the human brain, and we build mathematical models that emulate uh, cognitive and, uh, you know, perceptual ability in software. So is is a sort of reverse engineer the brain. So it's like an R and D lab almost it, in, it this, is. in this space. Yeah. And then that is what inspired you to start Neurala. Can you talk about your inspiration? Yes, the inspiration actually came in 2006, and I was uh, working with uh, Heather uh, and Anatoly, which were my two co-founders. So Heather is American, Anatoly is Russian. I'm from Italy. Sounds like a joke. You know, we <laughs> meet, we meet in the square and we say, well. Our software was very, very slow. We, could, we wanted to run it faster, because otherwise it was just impractical. And so we devised a method to use graphic processing cards, which are the uh, vulgarly called video cards that are in everybody's cell phone today. Uh, and we say, oh, what if a video card, as opposed to rendering pixel, will render neurons? And so we, we did the patent, and we looked at each other and said, what do we do with this patent? Now we were studying at Boston University. We decided to create Neurala to contain it. And uh, that's how we started the company, almost a, as a joke. And then it grew with NASA, Air Force, and a bunch of other customers to become what it is. Wow. Do you consider yourself and your co-founders a disruptor? Absolutely. So um, I, I, think, I think that we took on a challenge that was, at that time, gargantuan, right? Uh, I remember talking to some investors back then and, uh, and the experts in the field. They were laughing at us. And the ten, just 10 years ago, the World Neural Network was banned from any proposal that I was writing, uh, for instance, for funding. And today, the same guys ask me to put that thing on, on paper. So it's a huge validation. You have to have the perseverance and the, and the strength to stay around until uh, what, you, what you think is a dream becomes everybody obvious reality. Max, what do you think the future is for artificial intelligence as a whole? The artificial intelligence is going to be our companion everywhere. And uh, uh, I would say, uh, contrary to what you hear from um, Musk uh, and Gates and uh, Hawkins, uh, I think it's, uh, it's going to be um, uh, uh, saving humankind rather than harming us. Uh, the complexity of humankind is such that we need AI not only to solve big problems uh, like pollution and, uh, and overpopulation, uh, but to cope with, with progress. You know, we cannot be more sophisticated than we are today unless AI helps us to do that, right? So machines are too complex, sensors are too complex. So it's, it's going to be liberating. Wow, this is also interesting. Thank you so much for being here. And a little piece of advice before you go, NASDAQ's uh, ambition, our themes here are ambition and innovation. What advice do you have for entrepreneurs? Uh, don't embark in an enterprise that you consider possible. Always aim for something slightly impossible and, uh, and then do it. Great. Max, thank you so much for being here. Thank you. And thank you for watching. I'm Elise Southwell, and this is NASDAQ Disruptors.